pointed out, don't really know what's right to do. Government often makes the wrong choices because it doesn't understand the consequences of its actions. So even when it doesn't desire to be a nefarious force, to be a dark force, it often is. The problem that we have is the result of legislation. Congress has to make fundamental changes in the present system. I don't think that it's possible to impose from the top down even the constitutional system because no one out there now is used to using gold and silver as their money. So what needs to be done is to create a competitive system of currencies. Leave the Federal Reserve System there. Slowly, over six months or a year, take away some of its legal privileges, its legal tender privilege, its privilege is the only uh, medium to pay government taxes, so forth and so on. And over on this side, create a gold and silver system. And then you will have competition between the two, the paper money price structure and the gold and silver price structure. And it will be a competition. What happened is in this competition, gold and silver would win out because in competition, the free market usually wins out over governmental intervention and special privilege. And that's the reason we have governmental intervention and special privileges, to keep the free market from winning out. And that's why they go to government, to ask for legal privileges, all right? So, that's the first problem. Now, the second problem is I don't see that happening through Congress because there are just too many loggerheads in Congress to get the thing started. So my suggestion is that it begin in some state, a small state, a state that probably has a certain amount of its taxes that it can hypothecate to gold. And if the system worked and more and more people were asking, then the state could expand the areas of taxation and bring more people into it. And eventually, you would, if it worked, you would see the whole state, the state's monetary system, the government, state government, would be on a gold system. And then I would think as well, you'd begin to see that spreading into the economy. Now, if that were to happen, then I think other states would look at this and say, well, that makes sense. Let's begin to move in that direction. You could look at it essentially as a monetary insurance policy. They don't have to go beyond 10%, but 10% gold holding is perfectly prudent. And if something were to happen in the economy, if there were to be a monetary crisis, banking crisis, then the state could rapidly expand the system because people would know how it operates. But the idea is to get the mechanism, as it were, on the table so that people can see how it works, why it works, what its benefits are. They don't have to be afraid of it. And I, arguments along the lines of there's not enough gold and silver in the world to do this will you know, that kind of thing will be uh, shown to be fallacious. Concerned citizens should be asking themselves questions. Like, why do you feel like you're on a treadmill that's constantly running faster? Hey. Why does it now take a two-income family to make ends meet, thus preempting women from their traditional role of providing stay-at-home child care? Why do we see a never-ending expansion of government, even though our elected officials endlessly promise to reduce it? Where does the government get the funds to wage perpetual war, yet fails to provide the basic protection citizens needed on September 11? Why do rich people seem to be getting richer, while you and all your friends seem to be hardly making ends meet? Why does a first-class stamp now cost you nearly 40 cents when it used to cost only 5 cents? Should a 90% loss of purchasing power be tolerated? Where does it end? It's easy to see where we're headed. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. If you follow a graph, and you can see that there are points on this graph, and they're going constantly in one direction, and they've been doing this for 50 years, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see where it's headed. Where this graph is headed is for total destruction of our monetary system. Our money will be totally worthless and it'll probably be reissued in the form of some international currency which will be equally worthless but the value to these people is that once it's on an international basis there's nowhere else to go. Right now if you if you don't like American dollars you can buy uh, Japanese yen. If you don't like that you can buy uh, Swiss francs. If you don't like that, you can move to whatever currency seems to be having a little better track record. 
once there's an international monetary system in place modeled completely and exactly after the Federal Reserve System, it's exactly the same, then there's no place else to go, folks. You've had it. So that's where it's headed, and if we don't turn this thing around, I think we're going to be living in kind of a, uh, a modern serfdom. And we'll be serving masters, and they won't be living in the big castles uh, that we can see, at least, uh, and say, well, that's where the master lives up there, and we're tilling his field. Um, our masters will be the bankers and the politicians, and they'll live in big houses, but they won't be castles. But we'll be serving masters nevertheless, and we'll be thinking they're wonderful people without realizing that they are our masters. If the United States went back to constitutional money, it would be an amazingly wonderful event because it wouldn't be just going back to constitutional money. In order for that to happen, that means you'd have to assume a groundswell of awakening on the part of the electorate. And they would understand not only what's happening in the monetary system, but what's happening across the board in our political system. I think we would have a great resurgence of prosperity and tranquility. That means that the electorate would have to be questioning a lot of other things in our society as well. And I think we would see an improvement across the board, and I look forward to that day. Americans need to stay on top of one of their most influential institutions, the Federal Reserve System. They need to start asking questions, not only of their representatives, but of no less than the President of the United States, whose sworn duty is to uphold the law of the land, especially the supreme law of the land, the U.S. Constitution.